Hey peeps, let's talk about heart disease and pregnancy. Specifically, we're going to talk about valvular disease, mitral stenosis and regurg, aortic stenosis and regurg. But before we go into the abnormal, let's just talk about the normal physiologic changes of pregnancy. So estrogen and progesterone increase, and that increases the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So I have this very complex photo here. We're not going to go through it, but it goes through... Um, the estrogen progesterone effect on the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And then that's likely the reason for blood volume expansion in pregnancy. As you can see, plasma volume expansion here. So let's just redefine a few things. Cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. We'll also be discussing preload in this uh, in the next few slides. So preload is determined by the volume of blood present in the left ventricle prior to that systolic contraction. And then after load is the peripheral arterial resistance, which the left ventricle has to overcome to do, when doing a systolic contraction. Let's start at the bottom. So the heart rate of a pregnant patient increases their baseline about 10 beats per minute. So as you can see, based on our calculation, that will play into this increased cardiac output. And then systemic vascular resistance is decreased. And this is progesterone-mediated smooth muscle relaxation. And then also in pregnancy, vascular plasticity accommodates a larger blood volume to allow for this decrease in stroke volume. And as we discussed, an increase in plasma volume from that last slide. A couple other just physiologic changes due to this increase in plasma volume, it increases preload and then also increases left atrial volume. There is no substantial change though in ejection fraction when you're thinking about getting an echo on patients who have cardiac problems because the ventricle actually does some ventricular remodeling and does actually expand about 30 to 35 percent in mass um, and then you can actually see that this remodels itself again after pregnancy. So the body is amazing. So many amazing physiologic changes that happen in pregnancy. But because of these changes, we do have to be very careful about valvular disease. So here, just to remind you, if you are an OBGYN, maybe you're not looking at the heart very often. So just to remind you where these valves are. So here's your mitral valve coming in from the pulmonary side, mitral valve into the left ventricle, out the aorta, and then um, we're actually really only talking about the left side of the heart today, but just a reminder where the pulmonary and tricuspid valves are. Okay, let's start with mitral valve stenosis. This is the most common acquired lesion in pregnancy. So I made gr little green arrows for where these stenotic valves are. So take a look at those. The cardiac output in mitral valve stenosis is fixed due to that stenotic valve. And so because of this narrow mitral valve, blood can't get out of this left atrium fast enough and it accumulates in here and then backs up into the lungs. 25% of women who are pregnant uh, with mitral valve stenosis present in heart failure for the first time in pregnancy. So this can get bad very quickly and you may not even know that this patient has mitral valve stenosis. The one thing that we really need to look out for in mitral valve stenosis is tachycardia. So think about the heart beating very, very fast. The left atrium can't even get blood out on a normal heart rate. And so with tachycardia, it, there's even less time for this left ventricle to squeeze all this blood, the left atrium to squeeze all the blood out into the ventricle. And so there's even more pulmonary congestion. So we really want to avoid tachycardia. Some management here, you want to avoid Valsalva maneuvers in these patients. You want a short second stage where you're going to be um, looking at an operative vaginal delivery in these patients and recommend an epidural. Um, pain control is very important for decreasing um, the pain threshold, obviously, and then also that will stabilize the cardiac output somewhat. So it's very important to have adequate pain control. Aortic stenosis we see here. So usually, typically, this is from a congenital bicuspid aortic valve. This is typically diagnosed by hearing a harsh systolic murmur that radiates into the carotids. 
it's actually aortic stenosis is generally well tolerated in pregnancy um, as long as it's mild to moderate but if it if it is severe aortic stenosis then uh, the patient will tolerate it pro- most likely very poorly um, you can't the heart cannot accommodate due to the aortic stenosis the increased cardiac output so this increases the left ventricular end diastolic pressure and this also can cause pulmonary edema similarly to the mitral valve stenosis a reminder that aortic stenosis is a preload dependent condition so this is really important in any situation where the patient may become hypotensive like epidural placement or a postpartum hemorrhage you would actually rather have to give the patient diuretics than for your patient to be hypovolemic but euvolemia is always the goal just a note here that there's a high risk of ischemia under stress with aortic stenosis so keep that in mind you know we want to keep everything as normotensive euvolemic as possible next oh i can't get it to go to the next one sorry about that management so we already talked about that and again an operative delivery for a shortened second stage here all right mitral valve regurgitation this can be associated with mitral valve prolapse and as you can see here instead of the stenotic v i have an open valve here for regurgitation this should be uncomplicated in pregnancy but sometimes these patients can be more delicate flowers due to this left ventricle dilation and impaired contractility excessive preload can cause pulmonary congestion but insufficient preload won't give enough adequate forward flow for these patients and so i actually just wanted to get this arrow up there's the the drive in pregnancy to increase cardiac output can actually exacerbate this left ventricular volume overload and then therefore have a back filling and pulmonary congestion you can consider diuresis in the early postpartum period when the fluid shifts are the highest and you can also see this is um, excessive preload can cause pulmonary congestion but insufficient preload won't give enough forward flow here and so last but not least we have aortic regurgitation so with aortic regurgitation the left ventricle compensates for decreased forward flow i'm just going to click forward to get some of my arrows here for decreased forward flow with increased left ventricular end diastolic volume the decrease in systemic vascular resistance in pregnancy actually tends to improve cardiac performance with aortic valve regurgitation so you should be able to provide standard OB care to these patients, but just be on alert if any changes occur with vitals or symptoms in anyone who has um, valvular disease in pregnancy or any kind of cardiac problem. So that's it. A uh, quick but very detailed topic to go over. I, uh, my main resource was the Gabby Obstetrics book. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, anything else that you want to go over. But I hope that this was helpful, and let me know if you liked any of the animations. Have a great day.